Nini everyone, Zabor here. We are back to our uh, lessons. We are on lesson 12, which is going to be on candle magic, hence all the candles. Um, so I haven't had a chance to tea stain the color or the candle section yet, and I think I'm actually going to hold off on staining um, some of the pages because they're aging so beautifully and so fast. <laughs> I'm actually gonna just kind of slow down and, and try to fill it up with knowledge before I start dragging coffee everywhere. So uh, our last lesson was on colors and today we're gonna talk about how I mostly implore colors which is through the use of candles. Um, although again you can use them to make different types of charms and workings and stuff like that but candles is the main way that I implore uh, color magic. So Let's go ahead and start. Um, I'm not sure if I want to break this down into two videos. We'll have to see how long it gets. But there are quite a few terms that I want to go over first, just so you understand in later videos when I say, hey, flip that candle, or hey, uh, that one has to be set first. You know, you're going to understand what it is I'm talking about. So uh, here we go, terms. Lights. A term to identify all kinds of candles and oil lamps, okay? Setting lights. To dress and light candles and lamps for workings. Petition papers are set under the light and chants and prayers are said while lit. This only applies to dedicated candles that are left to burn clean through, okay? Dressing and fixing. This covers preparations of candles, lamps, and uh, other excuse me, this covers the preparations of candles and lamps, such as carvings and writings, names, anointing it with oil, loading them, budding them, flipping them, dusting them with herbs and powders, sealing and knocking them, and just basically prepping them for spell work, okay? Loading, to dig or carve a hole into the wax of a candle, fill it with herbs, curios, and or paper, and then seal it back up with wax. So we kind of did that in my in my sleep video. You guys did see that. Um, where I took the candle and I carved Z's into it. And I loaded it with herbs and oils. I did not, however, fill it back up with wax and then reseal it. Although, again, that is an option you can do. Uh, although I typically only do that when dealing with much larger candles than these ones here. Uh, such as skull candles. That's a good place to load with petition papers and herbs directly uh, linked to mental powers and or dominating the person or whatever it is. Um, so then we have budding and flipping, okay? And that is to cut off the tip of the candle, all right? Flip it over. Oh, excuse me. It'd probably be better to show you on this one because this one actually has a point. So what you would do is you would cut off this point right here until it looks flat like this, okay? And once it was flat, you would flip this over and then carve this butted flat in into a point. And that is flipping the candle. You are reversing a candle, okay? And that is used in reversing uh, and hex breaking type, type rituals, okay? So uh, that is butting and flipping. That's to expose the new wick and all that and burn it down, of course. Um, sealing and knocking. That is to make a power symbol over your candle. Uh, so, like, if you were Wiccan, you might want to make the Invoking Pentacle. Or, excuse me, is this the Invoking Pentacle of the Earth? I think that's it. Um, and the, Or whatever it is you're, you're prepping your candle for. Uh, you would make your power symbol over it, and then you would knock it against something. Okay? This one's a little soft. Oh, and they're really, oh, they're kind of oily, these candles. Ugh, gross. Um, so then you would knock it against the table three times, or if you have a preference number, then whatever. Three's for me, so that's, that's kind of up to you. Uh, so then you have burning in sections, okay? And that is when you purposely will put out a candle at different intervals, uh, such as like a seven-knot candle or something like that. That's to deliberately interrupt the burning. That is not to be confused with setting lights. That is not setting lights. Setting lights is like a jar candle that burns for seven days. You set it and you burn it all the way through. You don't let it go out. Okay? Now you have moving candles, and these specifically apply to spells, and that's when you have two candles that represent usually people or a place and a person, and you want to separate them. 
or bring them together. Your candles will periodically move. And this includes um, ritualized burning or burning in sections because you would light the candles if you wanted to bring them closer together and the, the candles represent our, how they are now, which is far apart. You would light them and let them burn a certain bit. And then the next night you'd bring them closer and let them burn a certain bit. And the next night you bring them closer and let them burn a certain bit until they were touching. And then you would let them burn all the way out. Now, obviously, it doesn't really work with these ones here because the idea is to get the wax um, to pull together. So pillar candles like this are much more appropriate versus the um, candles like this, which uh, are dripless. So they don't actually leave any sort of wax left behind. These are the candles that I use to activate my, uh, where did I put it? I just had it. Ah, fuck it. Um, little jars like this, okay? This is a, a salt that I have, a bath salt for a job promotion. I would burn it on this because it doesn't leave any kind of icky residue besides a little piece of unburnt wick versus something like this, which would probably drown the jar uh, in its wax, so. There's different candles for different purposes, okay? So that's that's a moving candle. Um, feeding a candle would be adding oil to the well formed by the burning wick, and these are typically done in these uh, vigil type candles where there's an actual little container. Um, although in candles like this, when they burn down, if there's like a little bit of a, a wax wall left, that, that kind of forms a well when it burns. You can add uh, bits of oil, magical oil, to, to the well that's formed by the burning candle in order to help feed the candle. Uh, now this is just used to add extra power to a working or to keep it going. Of course, you can implore Hekka, which is speech magic um, as the candle burns, but you know, preferences. So, um... Yeah, that is our terminology, and we're already at seven minutes, so that's what I was saying. Like, we're going to have to break this up, so we'll just make this part one, and then when I choose to make part two, I'll make part two. That's it for tonight, guys. Sit up, Jay.